Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'd like to call this regular meeting of the Public Utilities Commission to order for Monday, November 16th. This is November 1st. Well, it's the 15th. It is the 15th. 15th. All right. You're ahead of your time. <laughs> Mine says the 15th. You know what? I might have. I might have. I thought it was my kid's birthday. I know. Wait, wait, let me borrow your. I, I, <laughs> you want to borrow mine? This is. Yeah, yeah. That's the wrong. Yeah, that's uh, definitely the wrong. You know, because it's that last. That's the agenda for the one we didn't have. Okay, 15. It's the 15. Thank you for reminding me. Please rise, join me, and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, anybody online for public input? No, I don't see any. Uh, no correspondence other than the corrections to the, um, to the invoices. So I'll, I'll move on to. Um, Next order of business is uh, acceptance of the minutes of the regular meeting of October 18th, 2021. I'll entertain a motion to accept those minutes. Motion to approve. All right. From Dino, is there a second? Um, um, yeah, you I'll second it. All right. <laughs> All right. Here's Pete. You have to move over. All right, any any corrections, comments, observations? Hearing none, I'll try your minds. Those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 That motion carries. Uh, financial report. Uh, Brad, I will turn that over to you. All right. Um, I handed out uh, to everybody the summary page that has both on it. I didn't make it as part of my PDF. Sorry about that. I just noticed that today. Um, what you'll notice is with water department is in a deficit position. The reason it's in deficit is November's a billing month. So next month you'll see it in a big surplus position again. Um, sewer still is in a surplus, but two things that will affect that. We made a debt payment for $800,000, which is from our 2015 refinancing of the bonds. And um, once the Danbury quarterly bill is approved, We'll pay the first installment of that in November. Um, so that'll switch Absolutely. back. But Absolutely. the billing will come through. So it should be good. Yeah. So, um, but sewer probably won't look as good on the November report because of the debt payment, but obviously because you make a big chunk of it all at once. Because 600 of the 800,000, 615 was principal. Mm -hmm. So that's one time. And the interest you pay biannually. So we'll pay the other half of that in. Mm -hmm. So, um, otherwise, everything looks good. Um, question for you. Um, so these are these are monthly numbers, right? The summary. Yes. So year to date. Well, it's sorry. The this summary page is year to date. Oh, it is year. -to -date. Yes, it's a running total. Okay. So that, so what that means is that we're actually running, running pretty close on water. Is that uh, we're just kind of barely keeping up with expenses. Well, not really. It's hard to say because you got to look at the October report. Yeah. So the October report had one of the four buildings and had uh, a quarter of the expenses. Yeah. So right now you have a third of the expenses, but only a quarter of the billing. So it's it's going to swing that way every time okay. because we do the quarterly billing. We don't allocate it monthly. If there's one other item that's lagging on water is the money we've been spending on the water mains. Yeah. I haven't gotten the signed agreement back from the state yet. So I've not been able to put in for any reimbursements. Oh, okay. so we're going to get a big chunk when that finally comes in. Basically, yeah. everything we've paid out to Guerrera will come back to us. Okay. So we're behind 300,000 or so just on that. Okay. All right. And Tom, do you want to mention the thing that we talked about today with the sewer, with the state reimbursement? Um, yeah, I was going to get to that in my in my. All right, we'll talk about it then. But it obviously, it'll affect the financials too because that'll be a reimbursement. Because I don't know when that's coming anyway. Yeah. So. Okay. 
Well, uh, I'll put a motion on the floor that we accept the financial report. So sure. second. Second by Paul. Yep. All right. Any other questions for Tom or Brad? Just roughly what's what's going to come in next month on the bill? Um, let's see. So the first quarterly billing was 538. So it assume of close to 538. Um, at some point we'll bill out the hydrants. That's done in what April, I think. Make it clear. So it's not just the straight quarter of it because the hydrant piece is separate. Mm -hmm. um, but the last quarterly billing was 538. So I would expect in that neighborhood. Any, any other questions? No, Pete, you okay? You have any questions? Okay, all right. So we have a motion on the floor to accept the financial report. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? And that motion carries. Invoices. Uh, I'll put is Kathy, this one, this black and white. This is the correct one. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll, we have uh, six items to request payment on. And I'll put a motion on the floor that we approve these six items on the uh, request dated November 15th, 2021, in the amount of $1,292,515.62. So, second? Second. Second by Rich. And we should look, look, look that over for a few minutes. Any questions? Uh, feel free to ask Tom. Any questions for Tom? Why was the pending one changed from what was online? I'm sorry, what's that last week? The one that was online was actually the prior month's bill. Okay. It was 200 plus thousand, 217, I think. Right. It was just, uh, you know, the wrong number got uh, okay. plugged in. So it was just a, okay. okay. We have a motion on the floor to approve this month's invoices. Those in favor, please say goodbye by saying aye. aye. <laughs> That carries. Uh, we have no new business to consider tonight, so we'll move on to uh, director's report, Tom. Huh? Okay. Uh, the thing that uh, Brad had mentioned, um, when we did our sanitary uh, sewer survey for sub area 14, we did that work actually prior to this Kenyan construction job. Well, we did that two years ago, 2019. We were uh, subject to a 55% grant. And unfortunately at the time, there was no money in the pot, so we never got it from the state. Um, so I kind of just stayed in touch with them every six months or so to see where we're at. And I think there's money now available to us. So it was unbudgeted, but it looks like we'll get that grant money of uh, about 111000 So that's on the plus side. Um, <clears throat> uh, PFAS, if you've heard of PFAS, they're known as uh, Forever Chemicals. Yes. They're in firefighting foam and they're in a lot of uh, consumer products. They're in your um, bloodstream. Yeah. EPA and Connecticut are you know, moving towards regulations on those. So we tested and um, what, what Connecticut's looking for is there, there's six um, individual PFAS components. Um, good news is we had uh, pretty low um, like parts per trillion, single digit parts per trillion. Right now, EPA is looking at um, uh, 70 parts per trillion for, for two of those components. So for our two wells that I tested on, um, for six of those components, we came in at about 13 on, on one well and 11 on the other. And that was the addition of the six components. So unless they go crazy with a really low, low number, we, we look like we're, we're in okay shape there. Um, Connecticut is following the same at this point as the EPA. Mm -hmm. They're looking at those two and they're looking at uh, 70 parts per trillion, but mm -hmm. you know, still subject to further review and you know, you know, who knows what they're gonna come up with. But the other good thing is several Northeast states are looking at different um, regulations and some of them are like a combined number. Some of them are individual numbers and 
anything that either New York, New Jersey, New Hampshire, Vermont came out with, we were still below their numbers. So at this point, I think, uh, you know, our numbers look okay. So I just wanted to pass that on. Um, an update on uh, the uh, land development across the street at 155 uh, Greenwood. Um, due to a conflict with that existing drainage culvert, when they originally put the plan together, the engineer didn't realize we were putting a new main in and we were putting it on the other side of the culvert. So he had that uh, connecting on both ends, Greenwood Avenue and School Street. But now that there's a crossing of a four by eight culvert, it didn't look you know, too feasible for us to even want to take on owning a main that's going to be that deep under a culvert. So basically, they're back to what they probably would have originally started with had they known about the culvert, just coming in off of Greenwood with a uh, separate domestic service and fire service. Mm -hmm. One thing I did ask them to do, because um, we didn't have to, but uh, we asked them to go ahead and put a hydrant in at the end of the line um, down towards School Street. So that could give us flexibility in the future if we, we want to eliminate the hydrant that we have in front of the building or just keep both. Mm -hmm. So just, just an update there. Is that a main point you're bringing in? Or a, six? Uh, a six. A six. Um, let's see what else. I discovered a couple of discrepancies with um, some Eversource electric accounts. So um, nothing major, but I, I, I found a, a town account charged to sewer and a water account being charged to sewer. So I got dressed out with the finance uh, department. Um, so they got, they went back to the beginning of the fiscal year and, and made those adjustments. Uh, it'll be on the plus side for sewer and we'll probably be a little bit maybe on the negative side for water because now that that sewer account is going to go there. So it may or may not have a bearing when we get to the end of the year as far as our budget number. Um, what else? Uh, the state had money and came out with a what they're calling a low income household water assistance program. If you're familiar at all with the uh, the electric energy program, mm -hmm. where um, if, if the household has a need or if their bill is x greater than an x percent of um, their their household income, and mm -hmm. that's like less than say 60 percent of the state median. Um, they would be eligible to get into this program. What it comes down to is um, the households would have to apply for it. Um, the utility also has to apply kind of, kind of to let the, the state know that we would be a vendor. Mm -hmm. And then basically um, they would pay us for the water bill in effect. So that, that's basically how the, the program works. Um, I really don't know how many households might get kicked out, you know, try to participate but it is something available to us. I was planning on putting our name in the hat and, and just, you know, yeah. be, becoming a, a, an approved vendor. Do you know if that includes sewer as well, or is it just the water bill? Um, you know, the application indicated do we provide water and sewer. Okay. So um, I, I, I really don't know how many households in Bethel take part of like on the, I was trying to find out on the energy side. Yeah. Even numbers, I, I spoke to, the, the agency in Danbury, I forget exactly uh, the name of them. Um, there are some community action groups. Um, I tried to get some information from them as to numbers, how many Bethel households participate on the energy side, mm -hmm. assuming that that might be a, a target, at least on the sewer water side, but I didn't get any feedback yet. I think that the industry standard is if a household spends more than four and a half percent of their family income on, on water, and I, don't, and I don't know if that includes wastewater, but if it's both, but if it's above four and a half percent of their adjusted income, then then that's a problem. They, they should be they should be eligible for some kind of a program. But I don't I don't know of any way to isolate that number here in Bethel if we have any way to do that. And, and I'm not sure if that's part of this program or not. What I yeah. did see was like they were using, depending on how many in the household. Um, they were looking at like 60% of the state median income. Okay. So let's just a round number. If for Bethel, if it's 100 grand, it'd be 60 grand. Okay. And again, depending on how many are in the household, yeah. that number adjusts upward to some extent. So if you have four people in the house, that 60% number might be something higher than, than, yeah. than uh, 60,000. Well, that's they, easy, have, they have all their numbers kind of already. Well, that's an easier number to isolate yeah. in terms of number of households. Right. 
Okay. Well, that's something that I think we should pursue. And, and, and again, it's subject yeah. to how much money is available. It looks like the first the first cut would be they were they would try to then um, pay the bill if they were about to be shut off. Yeah. Um, and then if there's that that was like one tier, and then the next tier would be again just assistance if they can't yeah. you know afford their bill, they would right. get one. But the first thing they were trying to do, I think, was just avoid you know the expense of you know, shutting them off and then turning them back on and just right. keep them in service. Right. Okay. It's a new program, I guess, on the water side. So, so it, it, if we've got households that qualify, we just make them aware of the program. That's yeah. one other thing and how we need to come up with a way to, you know, advertise it, if you will, the yeah. website or maybe your community newsletter or yeah. something to that effect. All right. Okay. Good program. Um, the last thing, um, and, and I don't have any real great information on this at this point, but um, if uh, P and Z, I think, is in, is beginning to entertain with the developer uh, up on Stony Hill, mm -hmm. uh, the property that kind of straddles uh, Bethel and Newtown. Yes, I think they had some pre-application meetings. So yes. evidently, there's a lot of units involved. That property in Bethel stretches all the way down towards uh, Walnut Hill Road. Yes. So right now, the information that I at least saw in the newspaper was um, 114 units in Bethel. On the Bethel side, right. so the mix was like 48 one bedrooms and 66 two bedrooms. So when you look at our sewer allocation, mm -hmm. that would calculate out at about 18,000 gallons per day. Mm -hmm. So um, we still have that allocation available to us, mm -hmm. um, and there'll be more information to come. Mm -hmm. I think we would want to get the developer in here to give us, you know, a, yeah. a little bit of a presentation before, yeah. you know, they get too far, but. Maybe before they get to the PNC stage. Yeah. Um, so there, was, there was nothing allocated for that property before. Was there? Um, you, you know, I, I didn't even look to see what the, they were grandfathered at, but it, it, there's probably a number. I don't think it would be a big number. I didn't think so. So, so we're looking at a, an, about an 18,000 uh, gallon per day. And I guess the piece that would go to Newtown would obviously go against their allocation. Right. Although it still gets pumped yeah, up the hill it's through it's our system still, as well. Yeah. So just a heads up, I think there'll be more to come in the next few months, but that's probably the biggest one, uh, you know, that I've seen since I've been here. So, okay. Great. Okay. Any yeah. questions? Yeah, I would, I've got a question. Yeah. Uh, after listening to what Brad was saying here earlier, uh, what, where are we about uh, looking at the rates for water, especially in sewer? Because we're coming up to January yeah, uh, last January was five. I guess it was five. You have to excuse me. I them of work today. I can't uh, my computer is not working. Um, I guess last January had about five percent. Three and a half. Three and a half. Okay. okay. And I don't. I don't think we've got anything else planned at this point. No. We have been. We had our uh, consultant put together our model a, a couple of years ago, two right. or three years ago, um, and basically. He had a lot of like um, uh, estimated numbers at that point. We never pulled the trigger on it at that point. We were waiting until we got a little bit closer to the end of our current rates. Mm -hmm. So really, this coming January would be the time to right. put the next rates in effect. Yeah. Right. Now, those bills don't go out until I think the April reads. Yeah. Yeah. So they don't go out until May. So I, I, I've been trying to get that done. I was hoping to have it done in the month of November. Mm -hmm. And I just have had a hard time getting our consultant and, and myself on the same page. I don't know exactly. He may have some medical issues going on, or well, he 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 did send Tom and I some some information, but it was missing some revenue data. Yeah. So which would inflate, you know, what it would look like. Like it would look make it look like we need to do some pretty hefty rate increases when we may may not well, need. We were so, spending money on. on Upgrading the water system. Well, especially what's coming. The, the biggest problem exactly. is that Bergstrom I, well. I agree, is we will. Correct. I, I, are we looking at what, uh, three, five years going out? I was going to look at another five year, yeah. you know, which is what we did previously. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, again, I was hoping to have it done, you know, before we're, we're sitting here today, but um, so that we had it in, in advance of January. When you really get, when you really get down to it, as long as we, even if we extended it into January, those bills aren't going out until until yeah, yeah the April reads, which are May. 
So even if we had it done in the first part of the year, which I know we will, okay. He gave he finally got back to me last week with his updated um, uh, uh, model. Um, we were going to have a sit down for him to go over with us, and he had a last minute cancellation. So I just don't want to see this slide off. No, like I, I was really hoping. To, yeah, yeah. What about sewer? Same thing. Sewer. Um, we I know, I know we're on a. I think we're on the plus side there. You got for sewer. You got to wait till you figure out what exactly we're going to owe Danbury. Yeah, they, yeah. they have it. They, because they're doing a design build now, right? Yeah. yeah. That, that that was the biggest thing where we held off on that because originally when they went out to bid two years ago, maybe it's a little bit longer. Yeah. The numbers came in at like 110 million. Yeah. And they had already borrowed 10 million for the design. Right. So their number was up to like 120 million. Of which our allocation is 17%. Mm -hmm. And it was funny, I think I reported here when they opened the bids that day, they just said the budget for this bid opening is 80 million, you know, 80. Yeah. So the two bids they opened, they just tossed them right away, switched gears. Um, that, 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 that's just on the Danbury side. On the Danbury yeah. side. But you know what? The, I don't know if you read this morning's paper. Mm -hmm. uh, on the front page, it said uh, on the west side of Danbury, they're going to be putting in. A power station to support sewer and water in, in the amount of two hundred million dollars. Mm -hmm. Now, is that going to impact all of the uh, uh, municipalities that are involved here, or is that a, just a Danbury issue? I, that's a good question because I read that this morning and I said, "Well, this is news." Yeah, you know, they, they, because I don't know a thing about it. Right. So I don't. I don't. I don't think it has anything to do with us. I, I don't think they are gonna the, the design that they're working on, and I believe the number is, is 12 million gallons a day. Yeah. And we've allocated two million gallons a day. So right. that's our 17%. Right. If they're gonna add any additional flow, it, it, it's gotta come from their yeah. allocation. Yeah. So I, I don't know that it's gonna get distributed yeah. out to all the all the municipalities. Even for Danbury, that's a chunk of change. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, then, then Matt, I want to ask, I, I don't know if in, in the last meeting uh, in the area here, have they settled up with Brewster and Southeast about the storage issue coming in? No, nope. they haven't. No, no, they, they haven't settled up, but there's been no action on it either. When, when Bowden left to go up to Hartford to become a tax commissioner, yeah. all the conversations on that stopped. And as, as far as I know, uh, I, I asked, remember asking the mayor Cabo about that uh, some months ago, and it, he he was focused on their magnet school and, yeah. and their academy, and, and he, they really weren't paying any attention to that. Okay. So I don't think there's anything cooking on that. Okay. I don't, those are my concerns. Yeah. 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 And I, I don't know that they could take additional flow now and put it into a plant that they just designed it for 12 million. Yeah. 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 So I think Danbury's plan is probably, you know, if, if you take whatever we're using two million a day, take out Brookfield, take out Ridgefield, take out Newtown. No, I think any other flow they're looking at basically having it come out of their own allocation. Okay, which would probably mean we're not going to recoup any any anything out of it basically. So their plan must be to reduce their existing flows to take on additional. When do we have to start paying into that? Not till they complete it. They're, co they're coming pretty close, aren't they? Because I drive by, and I want to say they're probably close to about 60% completion. They, they have to have the phosphorus uh, portion of the plant yeah. online by April. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's coming in April. And that's a portion of it. I think they have to get the overall completed, I, I want to say 2023. And, and I think the last plan was Danbury was going to you know, go out and get the financing. I imagine they'll have to talk to the town so that we all buy in. All right. Not that I think it's going to still be there. They're going to float the, the, the note and yeah. they're going to tell us what we own. That was Mayor Bowden's commitment to me. Right? Right. He said, no, no, because remember the, the original plan right. was we were all supposed to get our own finance. Right, right, right. And we so said, then, no, no, no. My last conversation with Danbury was that still the plan. Yeah. And honestly, if you went through the state program, Clean Water Fund, you'd be getting a 2% loan. Yeah. The likelihood is Danbury may be able to get themselves something less. Right? Yeah. I don't know what. what yeah, it depends on what the market's doing. I think right, what right. we get like one five six on the schools. Um, yeah. Danbury's not AAA. We are. Um, so I like to bring that up. 
you know, don't mind me. <laughs> um, so we had to look at it. The other thing we had to look at is before Dan Marie went out and did it, the sewer have money that they could pay down some of it, so we're not borrowing as much. So we'd have to look at that. We, we could do that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and if you did look at a race at, uh, study after that, you probably want to look at not doing as heavy over five years. You might stretch it out more depending on what else you have planned. Like water has a lot of capital needs still to the yeah. state. That's the reason why plants go through that sewer. Yeah, yeah. Then they start banking it up. It, 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 it's hard to have the number, so you don't want to go out for a rate increase until you really know what the numbers are. Right, exactly. And then collectively, we need to decide how, how much construction money do we want to spend on sewer. You know, the last couple of years now, we spent between 250 and 300. You know, there's more repairs that could be done, lining and so on. So we need to come up with kind of an annual number that we think is, you, you know, affordable to us. Um, how about this infrastructure package that we just signed today? Did, are we in line for any of that for the water treatment plant or the sewer stuff? Or I replied to Senator Murphy put out a request for they call it a, uh, congressionally directed spending. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that was part of this infrastructure plan or not. Um, I, I did get two projects that made it over the first hurdle. And I think there were two projects that we already had in the hopper, um, Skeda and I think Bergstrom. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we might be able to get some either grant or you know some extra funding towards that. Yeah, towards that. Yeah. But what they told me was even if you make the first cut, there's there's more hurdles. Yeah. Well, and, and right, but we're still alive. Right. Okay. <laughs> we're still in the game. You know, if we can get a share of it, that's great. I, I, I did put in for some sewer work too, and but those projects didn't seem to uh, make the cut. Because we were talking what six million on the water treatment plant or something like that. The last it's it's like eight million. Well, right. when, when you add in there twenty percent yeah. construction yeah. contingency, but the way materials have been going up, yeah. Every time I get an estimate from Ray Pierce, you you, you know as far as because of steel tankage, there's piping and there's a lot of materials that are just going crazy. So is, is it anything that Ray Pierce can look at too, or? or do they have any other projects where they might be applying for these funds or um i'll check with marius but i mean we already have our projects in to the uh drinking water state revolving fund yeah well right. I, I i don't know where this other step is coming in for the the federal money yeah so. yeah I, i'm so. not sure at this point I'll, I'll, I'll have to try to find out all right that'd be great yep all right i have a few questions yep um hydrants we or is that Kelly's there? Well, just the same thing with Tinker. I talked to Tinker when they're caught up, they're going to come yeah. in the town. There's, there's still not caught up. Uh, how about uh, Fleetwood Avenue with the services change over? I don't know. Did we, that's still Tinker that you're talking to on that? I was talking to a couple different companies, but we thought Guerrero would do it, but they come in with a crazy number. They, I think they're just too busy, so they threw a crazy number at us. Um, Earth Movers, they gave us a price, but I don't think they're interested. But I think Tinker would be the ones to have a look at that. Because Bobby's, I think, I think Bobby's plan on going after that next year. I'm not sure at the beginning of the year or the end of the year, but we want to get all those flipped. Right. Well, that's why I was yeah. trying to, you know, if we can get some done yet this fall, but uh, yeah. we're in the you know, yeah. December. I mean, we can probably go back to Earth Movers and just, you know, he gave us his number now, like, like a year ago or more. Yeah. So we could probably have him, you know, sharp, you know, look at it again and see what he's what he comes up with. His it's really his labor yeah, and the cost of and the, the cost of asphalt because we were going to supply the materials. We have all the materials. So his, you know, it's just a matter of how, you know, I know he had a big project in Brookfield. Uh, Brookfield was doing a water main, so he may not have a lot of water main crews. And if he was doing that project this year, maybe that's done, and maybe he, you know, his guys could be available. So might be something to do and go back to him and see. Give yeah. us a number, or if you get somebody lined up for first thing in the spring, you know, yeah. that we know that that's what we were trying to do <laughs> just with our movers last year, right? right. Beginning of the spring, you know, I, I don't like to see the digging the holes and trenches and you know, and the road after that, it gets mm -hmm. you know, the compaction's not there. All I think the agenda after, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Anything else, Tom? Uh, nope, that's it. Well, uh, PUC uh, project 
summary. Is there anything else to add? Uh, a couple of minor, the, the, the Kenyan, uh, the sanitary sewer project, that, that's just about to an end. Um, other than now, he'll come back and do his, his year end. Uh, um, you know, they, they, a year later, they come back and CCTV the lines. Yeah. So the overall number came in a little bit under uh, on that contract. Um, you know, when you look at the balancing, when you look at the estimated quantities, and then you looked at what he actually did, the big, the big savings we got there, there was a one open cut uh, repair, which, um, you know, early on when they cameraed it, they realized that they could probably do it as a short liner. Mm -hmm. So we ended up not doing the $15,000 um, um, open cut, and we did a short liner, which was, uh, I forget what the number was there, but it was much less. So when you look at all the balancing, we came in about 6,000 under the contract amount. And then on the water mains, uh, Guerrero really is substantially done. They, they've put all the mains in, they've tied them all in, they've done all the services. They've done all the temporary paving. So really next spring, we got permanent paving and any sidewalks and curbing. Mm -hmm. um, but the big item there, um, traffic control, they went pretty well over the allowance. Um, they came in under on several items. So I'm really not gonna know whether we're gonna be into the contingency or not. Right now, we're probably close to the, the contract amount with the overage on traffic and the and the underage on you know some of the other quantities like pledge or uh, unsuitable material or you know some of the services, the number um, is coming in under. So um, but we're close. And the state allowed like a 5% contingency. So I don't think we're going to get beyond any of that. So. Um, and then the last thing, Berkshire Well, uh, Wright Pierce is continuing. They're, they're uh, beyond the 60% the design stage. They're getting ready soon to go to P&Z and then the wetlands for the permit that they're going to need there. I think there's an environmental permit we need from state DEEP. Um, so they'll, they'll get going on that too. And, um, probably won't be long and, and they'll be at the 90% level and ready, ready to go out to bid not long thereafter. So come to an end. Okay, that's it. Any questions? Just one more. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, now that we find the sewers, okay. Maybe it's Kelly can answer this. Are we seeing a reduction in sewers going to uh, Jennifer here? Uh, I didn't really look at the numbers, but I know in the in the uh, plum trees area it has dropped off. Oh, yeah. That that's that's the one that we'll see the biggest impact on because the linings we did are in that zone, and I, I meant to do that, and I still will get to do that just to look at how we've been doing over time. I know the lining we did previously had some work in in, in the plum trees um, over by the old police station, and it made an impact. So how, how do we ever make out with the plum trees association? Did we go in there and fix those things? We, we did the items that were on the contract and I never heard back from- Did uh, we send them a bill? Uh, not yet, because the con it's really okay. just coming to an end. Okay. So I think we can talk more about how we want to go about that. But I know one thought was assessments or- Yep, send them a bill. Yep. I just saw on that fans of a person well, with a filtration system, there's a sewer drains going in there. We're watching that floor now. Are there what? But the filtration system is going in. And you got floor drains going in there? Uh, I, or, think, I think there was. Out? I didn't see them. Um, I may, I only cut, there's like 66 drawings in the, in the plan well, set. That's the question I'm bringing up. Can right. I'll take a look. I'm pretty sure, yeah, there's a couple of floor drains in there. Yes. And I didn't see them. Okay. It may not have been on the print that I, that I circulated. Right. Because there was more detail. There was a lot of detail. So I tried to just kind of hit the overall plan, the site. Um, what the process looked like and some of the plumbing and some of the mechanical. I'll take a look deep. And right here is doing all the ventilation design. Correct. Yeah. I gave you the uh, the title drawing. That gave you what all the sheets were. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't think you wanted to bog down with that many. <laughs> no, but it's hard to see on the screen. Yeah, I know. It is. Okay. Any other questions? All right, uh, moving on to uh, supervisor report, Kelly. Uh, starting on the sewer side, uh, we've got the second check valve installed on the pump. So now all three check valves are working fine. 
so we could use all three uh, pumps and circulate through the system. Um, <clears throat> we did one last month, and the one this month had to be refaced due to the, the check valve itself because it was just an oddball size. But it finally came in, and they came down and they put it in. Um, we had to order two new uh, gear reducers for the muffin monsters because one of them failed and the other one was starting to make noise. So we got two of them that come in today and our guys will be installing them by the end of the week. Those are on the grinders that are taking the solids. The, the, the two gear reductions, uh, they're, they're five years old and run, been running constantly. They started to fail. They started to get hot and make noise. So we ordered two new ones. We're gonna find out if we can send the existing ones out to be rebuilt or if there's a way to go. Uh, but those came in. Uh, Saturday, Payne Road's Payne Road went on generator due to a tree going down during this fluke storm that came through. Uh, but other than that, everything's fine with that. Uh, we've been busy working with Guerrera uh, between shutting valves and uh, you know kind of overseeing what they, they've been doing. But uh, they're you know, like like uh, Tom said, they got done Thursday. They did their last pavement on Thursday. They cleaned up Friday. There's still a couple, matter of fact, I noticed the pallets over at the firehouse are still there. But other than that, the, they, I think they did a real good job. I think they had a real good main crew and uh, they, they worked very well together. Uh, we worked good with them. If they were short of something, I had it and they re reimbursed us. Uh, also on the water side, Hoyt Sill, the, the uh, fire pumps, uh, we had the co company come in and do a check on the um, domestic pumps. And at the same time, we did the fire pumps and everything seems to be fine. I think it's just lack of use uh, on those pumps. I think we need to run them probably every three months, just to, even if we let the fire department do a drill, let them go up to the top of Spring Hill and flow some water just to make them pumps come on. But we've, they, they rotated fine, they came on automatic. Um, there's two pumps, pump four and pump five, and they, they go back and forth, we lag, we lag. And they were fine. They were moving plenty of water, so we're we're in good shape there. And once they came out, I told Chris to uh, do away with the um, uh, I, I call it non hydro district, but what it was is it, so they would use tankers up there until we were sure that the system was working good, and we're we're back up to where we need to be. Um, as I said last month, Benzing's retired uh, as of the end of last month. Uh, we did interview one gentleman. Uh, he came in and uh, he he didn't have the certs that we're looking for, but he has the experience working on treatment, working on distribution. Um, he's got his name in to take the test for the certs, but he just hasn't. Uh, the state just hasn't opened it up yet. I mean, we're 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 doing that with all of our guys to, to get their higher levels. Uh, this one guy is good for treatment two, and they need to have a treatment three to be in our system, but um, he's going to be coming in at the beginning of next month that, uh, or coming on board at the beginning of next month that uh, we're going to feed him to the wolves. Mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, also, Chestnut Village, uh, we do have as built on all the services. We found them after our last meeting, and I did reach out to uh, Steve DeMarco to make sure he gets us the map of the sewer in there. The sewer there was tied into the three existing laterals. But there's like two or three laterals into each one, so we just want the drawing of that. But but that's that's what we're waiting on Steve to get back to us. Um, other than that, that's really about it. Questions for Kelly? Uh, uh, Benedict Road. Benedict Road. The, yeah, get the ad built on that. Well, which ones on Benedict? The ones yeah. that are stuck in the back. Four yeah. house subdivision. Uh, no, we didn't get that. No, we didn't get that. Yeah. yeah. That's. Um, Let's see, what do they got there? They got they're already, they're already active. Yeah, yeah, there's two yeah. pump up sewers in there. That two was uh, right. They, 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 yeah. yeah. Did they go back to the main there and, and, and tie into the mains, or were there already? Uh, uh, no, there, was a, there, there was a stub. I think there was a stub for the second house. There was the existing house, then there was one, one uh, lateral stubbed out, and they had to put in three new ones. And of course, they had to bring the water in for a quarter. Yeah. But those are uh, those are pump up sewers coming. Yeah, up. It, I had spoke to Marty about that. You know, if we were entitled to any funds, I don't know if they're sold already. So he said he was going to check into that. So. Yeah. 
You mean for allocation or? Yeah, for allocation. Yeah. Because um, you've got to go back and research how it was originally when the, you know, it was all one piece of property. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I know there was one lateral there because they, they put a sub in for that one lot, not yeah. knowing they were going to go all the way to the back. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you two houses on Payne Road, the one's going up on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. Are they tied into the gravity system or the pressure side? Um, they are, oh, they're in gravity. Yeah, they're definitely in gravity. Two okay. up there. Yeah. And I think one of them, I think one of them goes out to, uh, is that Partridge? It's, it's what is it? Bluff? They're two way up on the hill. Yeah, I know, I know the ones you mean, but one of them is going out toward Partridge. I know they brought water into the Partridge side. Um, but I think one of them is going up. No, this, I, I'm sorry, I, I should have this for you. There's a, there's a connection that comes from the bottom of whatever that side street is, Partridge, that ties into pain. The two laterals were on that sub piece. They never had to go out into the road on that. You, you know what I mean? We're on the same. Pardon me? Is it the bluff lane? I think it's bluff. Is it no, bluff, it's, bluff. it's the one, bluff. when you turn off a pain on the bluff, right. it's the one, the dead end that comes down the bottom. Um, that's where they have access to those homes, but that's what it does. It takes the cul-de-sac at uh, Partridge, which again, that's what I think it is, and then it, it goes down through the woods there on a, a right away. And there was two laterals there for that. So we had a question: How many people do we have up at Eureka Reservoir during the day? Um, really, just two. You've no. got uh, Justin okay. and, and why, do we, why do we have two there? I don't understand. Why do we have two? Because Ed's doing a lot of his reporting and his sampling, and then we have another guy that that does the runs, and that's where he's. Does he have to stay there all day, or can yeah. we use him as a as a supplement? Oh, he, yeah, he's all over the place. I mean, oh, he's, I'm just, he, I'm yeah. just wondering because we're always looking to hire somebody, but we do have somebody that's available. Yeah, and what I what's his qualification? Justin is a um, he's a right now he's a two for treatment, and he's waiting to test for a three. Once he becomes a three, then he'll have the highest level. He needs for the size of our system. And you'd be able to use it for something else? Well, yeah, we do. I mean, you know, they do their morning rounds, they do their afternoon rounds. Like I said, Ed's doing samples every Tuesday. They work together on basically about everything. Usually in the afternoons, they're driving together because they're going to the same places. But in the morning, Justin is usually doing the rounds and Ed's doing the samples. I understand we both have both fingerprints have to be up in case there's an emergency, but I just right. wonder if we have their. All day long. No, I wouldn't say all day long feed. I mean, they're they're you know they're they're on the road till about ten o'clock, and they have to do their readings at ten at, at ten o'clock, as well as the guys on the weekend. Um, and then, you know, again, they're you know they have duties and a little bit of maintenance on some of the different like the wells. They're constantly working on some of the wells. Um, and then after lunch, they go out and they do their rounds. Like they'll go up to the summit, check those two stations. Um, yeah, and then they check the wells again. They check Hoyt Hill. They check Chestnut. Got so one other think, question. Yeah. The uh, last past month we spent over spent three thousand dollars for some uh, line item. Yeah, was that for the MRI the meters? Those are for uh, that extra three thousand dollars. I ordered forty-eight meters for the wells. Mm -hmm. They're a different type of meter. They have no moving parts. What's happening with the wells out there? The meters get eaten up. With this this style that we have up there, they're different than the regular meters we have downtown here. And with shipping being the way they work, the way it is, and even at that, I have to wait two or three months for these meters. I've got a stock of 50 of them. Will I go through 50 of them this year? Probably not, but I have 50 in stock. So if there's ever an issue, I, I have them on hand. I don't have to have no meters. Oh, yeah, I have no problem having them. I just had a concern with over spec. Yeah. And with a line item in the budget. I think if it's if run into a situation like that, when you know it's going to be more, it should come back to the commission and let us know what's going on. That's all. Okay. Right? Because it is a line item in the budget. Yep. Be no different than my budget or anybody else's in the town. Mm -hmm. Especially if I did a fire, I think I'd be jumping all over here over spending a line item budget for $3,000. Right. Okay. Uh, I, I think with this situation, again, I, because of shipping being the way it is, I, you know, when I place the order, I wasn't even thinking the amount. I was thinking half. I understand, but okay. I think you have to get closer. One other thing, and I'll shut my mouth. Please check out on the pumps over there. Oh well. Yep. Okay. Are, are the, uh, have they all been replaced now, or we have one more? Um, 
Number two was replaced probably about five years ago. Uh, number one is the one that it was an oddball size. That's the one that had to be machined. And number three failed. Why we were waiting for, for the one to be, be machined, that failed. They were able to get us one a lot faster. So right now there's two brand new valves in there a month apart. And the other one's probably between four and five months, uh, four and five years old. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Seems like a lot of failures. Do we have a documented PM program? Uh, I would say we're, we're not even documented. No, I mean, you know, we, we, they document we, we know when, when they fail, we've got to do them. We don't know when they're going to fail. Not yet. All right. Well, no, no, no. We, what we is need, no, no, no? We need to have a preventative maintenance program for this equipment and not wait for it to fail to repair. Well, you should know, check the standard that, that time you're all just... businesses go through. There needs to be a document. Uh, how long do you guys have a feel? How long does one last? Like, what would what would be a, if we did it on a time basis, like X number of years after it's put in? Do you, do you know the equipment, I mean, all equipment has a different PM program. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, you're not just curious as if we wrote one because you're right. I, I agree with you. Have you're not wrong. If you need to do something like that for all your different parts. Yeah. So like a check valve, there may not be regular maintenance you actually do on the check valve. Should be replaced after. So when it get when it's you don't want to replace it too early, but if you have a spare ready to go, you know, and it really won't cause you much hurt if you already have the spare ready to go. Okay. I mean, you want to give me enough money? Gearbox is failing. <laughs> you know, yeah. gearbox is failing. When was the last time they were serviced? There's nothing to service on. There's not even a grease fitting. They're a sealed unit that goes under the motor into the grinder. There's nothing. All you can do is listen. When they start making noise, that's when you order. Well, them that's, that's part of a PF program. It's vibration analysis. So okay. Do we want to pay for that too? What I want is, is I want a written PM program for the equipment that we're responsible for. Okay. I don't think that's an unfair request. Okay. It's something, we, yeah, we can work with that. Well, sure. you do that because you're going to let me know if you're yeah. a pump station now that's right. quite part of the old yeah. ones. They're going to have to be degenerated. They're going to have to be upgraded because you're going to add two more, two more going on last time. And the old section down there, the old pump station should be. Yeah, yeah. I told you a year ago, number two has got to go. Number yeah. two has got to be redone, the one that's on, on Trover. No question. And, but we had, ended up putting, we had to put all the money into uh, the one at the firehouse. The no, one at, I, yeah, but that does need to be done. Saying, but that, that's a budgeted item that it has to be anticipated next year that you're going to have to come to. Right? I mean, yeah. If there's something we're forward to, that's all. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Right. What else? Anything else? Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I'd like to uh, uh, amend the uh, agenda that I'd like to put on the agenda naming the water treatment plant at. Um, Berkshire, Berkshire's property. Um, I know this is Paul's last meeting, so I, I would like his support in this. My brother had worked for the town of Bethel for 45 years uh, in the water department. I know he was in, instrumental in uh, developing, helping develop uh, water facilities in the, in the town. Uh, and I, I know that he was always thoughtful that the uh, Ferguson property down there would uh, yield the uh, water for the town, and it, it has. Uh, so I, I would uh, like to put a motion on the table that the um, uh, water treatment uh, facility at the Ferguson property be named the uh, Lawrence J. Straighten Water Treatment Facility. Oh, so okay, well, let, let's make a motion first to add oh, this to the, okay. officially add this to the agenda as the last business item. So I'll make that motion. Is there a second? No. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, no. So now, please, please, I would be honored to entertain your motion. All right. Uh, I'd like to put a, a motion on the table that we uh, name the uh, water treatment facility that uh, is under design right at the present time. In honor of uh, Lawrence Shea Straighton, who was uh, um, a town employee, he uh, started, uh, I believe, in like 1962 uh, for the water department, uh, became a superintendent of the water facilities uh, in town here. He has uh, 
been there for 45 years before retiring. And I, he was uh, instrumental in, in uh, looking for new water sources for the town. And uh, I, I know that uh, he, he built a, the first some property there, the, the ball field property. Uh, would it yield the water for the town? And uh, since then, we've done a lot of testing down there. They had done testing years ago also there. Um, and I would like to um, put his name in as uh, Orange Shade Straight from Water Treatment Facility for the town of Bethel in his memory. I'll second that. Well, it's, it's overdue recognition because, you know, you stop and think. That's history. He found that you know he discovered this area and saw saw the potential. So all we'll do. It, it was developed uh, during the, a lot of the droughts that we had when uh, the reservoirs just couldn't keep up with the demand at the time. Uh, if we didn't have these wells in place right now, we would really be hurt uh, with the demands that the town had. So it was foresight. Uh, of the town and the people involved in it to look for the new wells uh, to support this. So I would uh, appreciate uh, the commission's approval for this. Okay. We'll have a nice brass plate for you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we have a motion on the floor to name the new treatment facility in honor of Lawrence J. Straighten. Is there any other comments? Those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Great, that carries. Thank you. This, uh, the chairman. Long overdue. Now, before we move to adjourn, I've got something over here, which I want to thank the staff for. Uh, as it has been noted that uh, Mr. Zakowski is not leaving town government. He, don't look so concerned. It's okay. <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing to be worried about. Um, however, he is leaving the Public Utilities Commission after 16 years go. uh, <laughs> of going through a lot of trials, tribulations. We've gone through the consent order from the Department of Public Health. We've gone through uh, a lot of hand wringing and angst and arguments over how best to proceed with the capital improvement plan. But uh, Lori Matthew once told me that just a couple of years ago, after we went through all that stuff, that um, Bethel, she looks at Bethel and she talks about Bethel as being a shining example of how to turn things around. So, Paul, this is in recognition of your contribution over those 16 years because we're in a pretty good place and you today and you uh, are a big part of that. So this says Selectman Paul Zakowski, Public Utilities Commission, 2005 to 2021. And there are goodies inside this thing. I'm not going to take the top off, but there's there's stuff in there for you. So, Paul, congratulations. And thank you for your congratulations. It's a little uh, miniature dog to go with me. So <laughs> you know I don't have a dog. Hey, you know, I couldn't find one for its size. Paul, <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for your contribution. Yes, yeah. thank you. I, I, I want to rip it. My lip is still. Really, guys, thank you for this. Uh, I really want to say, you know what? It's just not me, it's a team. Uh, there's no I in team. And, you know, 16 years ago when we started up, I was sitting next to Pete here, and we were saying, my God, this Public Utilities Commission with debt behind it was just unreal. And you know what I'm going to say? All of us sitting, serving on this team, we turned it around. I mean, to the betterment of Bethel is something that I'm very, very proud of, just like you are, that we accomplished something that's very visible. And it, it, this is a, a tribute to Bethel itself. But the people supported us. And you know, the only thing that I have to say that was on the negative side a little bit, and we wanted to sell the water company. <laughs> the people said, no, OK, we're, then we're going to fix it. And yeah. we, we are in the process of fixing it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I'll tell you, this is uh, all my years in management. This was a fun, fun commission. I mean, you got to see every, at every meeting, we accomplished something. We spent some money. As my wife says, how many thousands did you spend today? <laughs> but on the other hand, it was look at the bottom line. Yeah. The bottom line.
coming each year when you see in October 2020. What's something for all of us to be very, very proud of? I really enjoyed working with all of you. You, know, um, you wonder, I'm sure you're asking yourself, why is it falling off? Well, 16 years, you know, it's time for somebody else a little bit. And when you're in that 80s, <laughs> and maybe it is time to take a look at something different. And my wife always said, Hey, you were good with money. Go see Brad. Yeah. <laughs> Come on up, Paul. <laughs> Bring the goodies. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I really miss working with you guys. This was really a great privilege to work with such a great group because, as I said, no matter each meeting can be for our person. That, that, that's, that's the sign of good management. Mm -hmm. Thank you to all of you. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. All right, I want to take a motion to adjourn. Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 This was a big meeting, right? Water plant. Um, you know, I, 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 that's right. I still